Welcome to Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. We've got a great show for you today. We've got lots and lots to cover. We're going to talk a bit about grassroots MMA today. We're going to talk about Irish MMA. Uh, with me is a UK MMA pioneer, uh, a true legend, Aaron Redmiss Chatfield. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I'm not sure about the pioneer bit, but I'll go with well, it. Well, you've, you've been around for a long time. A while. Um, tell, tell me and, and tell some of our viewers, when did you get involved in MMA? Um, so I originally, I originally did what everybody else did, which is I saw uh, the early UFCs. I remember seeing yeah, UFC yeah. one on VHS. Um, but I, at the time, I was Thai boxing. And uh, around about um, 98, 99, I decided that I'd had enough of Thai boxing. I'd finished just kicking people and punching people and elbowing people. I decided I wanted to uh, take people down to the ground and carry <laughs> on punching it and kicking them. So um, I, I, there used to be a, a forum called SFUK. Found that. Got myself, found a club, and just basically quit Thai boxing on a Monday night. Tuesday night, I was doing MMA, or, or at that time, it was Valet Tudor or No Holds Barred. It, it wasn't even yeah, called MMA. Yeah, and, and a lot of other guys back around that time, kind of probably in the same club with you. Yeah, I mean, um, at, at the time when Team Coliseum was around, it was an established club. Um, it was one of the original clubs. There was only four or five London, London shoots. Um, uh, Lee Hasdell was around, a couple of other clubs. Yeah. Uh, and it was basically, um, you know, very few shows up and down the country, not many. Yeah. And it was, it, you know, it was really was the foundations of MMA as it is today. So, yeah. so what, what was the first show that you participated in either as a coach, as a quarterman, as a, the, your, your actual first involvement live on the night in the show? So um, the first show I went to see was a Millennium Brawl show. Yeah. And uh, the first show that uh, I had any involvement with was... Um, uh, one of the extreme brawls, I think, which was the follow-on to Millennium Brawl. But I, I, uh, I fought back in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2003, 2004 on the, the old Ultimate Combat Sport uh, yeah. combat shows. Um, but I didn't, I didn't hang around. I was obviously I'm, I was in my mid 30s at that time, so a little bit too late to, to be carving a career to the top of the UFC ranks. But yeah, I was, yeah. so mid 2000s, I was, I was fairly active in most areas. And, and now you're still involved in, in MMA, so tell our viewers what's your involvement today. So um, I still coach. Yeah. Um, I coach at Team Coliseum in, in Bolton uh, with uh, Danny Rushen, who's the head coach and the founder. And one of the, he used to be one of the original fighters in UK MMA. So we've got a, a stable of fighters, some real hot prospects like Saul Rogers in the featherweight division. Um, so I do that, but also I'm also involved in a lot of the shows. So like you, I do emceeing. So I emcee on a number of shows up and down the country, commentating and, and just generally, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get involved. If people think I can add value <laughs> to their, their show, if you know, if they need some assistance, um, I still love MMA, you know, after all yeah. these years, I still love MMA. I just want to keep involved. So I will do, you know, anybody yeah. needs help, they can just need to get in contact and I'll do what I can do to to be assistance to them. So. Yeah, what well, we were talking about before we started the show that um, it's really, I mean, we're, we're fortunate, I guess, uh, being MCs and, and it's the only way, a, shall I say, a gentleman of a certain age can still stay in the cage. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody once said something like that yeah. after my last fight. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, um, they said to me that, uh, uh, well, you know, not everybody can be a fighter. You get to a certain age, you might want to do something else. And, and yeah, it means that I can still be with fighters and I can still be involved in the show and, and to be honest um, part of the reason I MC is I like the attention so it's yeah. the, yeah, it's the only way both. you can be in the cage and still get the attention but not get punched. Yeah absolutely I think after my last fight the uh, the MC went to announce the decision and he said after three rounds of OAP action so, <laughs> so there you go. Very good. Um, so so yeah but I mean it's great to, to still be involved in coaching and still kind of have hands on see these younger kids coming up and you know um, kind of kind of give them a bit of old school flavor and I mean you know I'm sure you 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 know and have forgot a lot about MMA that, that these guys will never even learn just because of being around for so long and 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 being you know really involved. Yeah. Um, I know you're working it, and we were going to have Ian Butler on the show today, and and uh, he, he he missed his train. Shall I shall I just tell the audience, Ian, you missed your train. Yep. Um, but but he's got a comeback um, that he's working on, and, and certainly working with you. And I know you guys are tight. And uh, I mean, tell us a little bit about that. So yeah, I mean. Uh, I've cornered all of Ian's MMA fights, yeah. um, and we first met, again, going back to SFUK as a forum, we met on there, got together, we trained a lot. Um, uh, he's had an up and down career, some great wins, some disappointing losses, and uh, 
he's been retired now for a few years, but he suddenly decided, right, I think it's time to get back in there. But I don't think he's got any pretensions of saying, I'm going to be, you know, I want to get back up to being number one ranked featherweight in the country. I think the idea is to come back um, and try and prove himself that, you know, he went out on a few losses. He wants to come back out a few wins. So he's going to sure. be training at the full performance contact centre uh, in Rochdale. That's going to be his main base um, under Martin Stapes, the guy who was on The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I know that he's uh, been working on uh, and getting his weight down and getting his fitness up. He's got a marathon in the diary. So he seems pretty serious about it. He really yeah. does. And, and hopefully when he does fight, I can be back in that corner again. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, we can go out on a win this time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and another uh, thing that you and I have in common, and, and we're going to bring Barry Oglesby from Cage Contender on in just a minute, uh, but another thing that we have in common is, is we also get to experience Irish MMA. And I know a lot of our viewers that are, that are primarily based in England um, you know, they go to the big shows in England, they go to, you know, big shows in the North, they go to big shows in London, big shows everywhere. Um, but little is said about the scene in, in Ireland, and, and i got to say, I love Irish MMA. Yeah. Um, some of the crowds that, that, that I've been fortunate enough to work in front of, um, some of the most exciting and the largest crowds that have been, you know, the Irish guys. Um, Cage Contender, you're, you're familiar with Cage Contender. Um, so, you know, what, what are your thoughts about, about the scene that's going on over in Ireland and, and the things that, that they're doing there? Well, I mean, Cage Contender's the, uh, probably the right one to pick out of the hat because I think what John Ferguson's doing there, he's really taking the Cage Contender brand and trying his best to promote not just that brand, but Irish MMA on the back of it, which is really good. Most promoters tend to think about their own show. Yeah. But I know that, you know, John thinks about the, the bigger picture. He's been over to the UK before with the brand. I know he's uh, coming back uh, and working with um, Chris Sorber on OMAC to put on a show yeah. there. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. It, it, it's going to be great, and hopefully yeah. I can get a fighter in there as well. Yeah. We can fight over the MC in job if yeah. you want. <laughs> You'll get that. I know you will. So <laughs> never mind. Um, but uh, I think when I, whenever I see an Irish MMA show, you mentioned the crowd. The crowd at Irish MMA shows always seem to be you know, as an MC, the crowd where you, where you go, come on, let's make some noise, and they genuinely make some noise, yeah. you know, they yeah. really do. Very supportive of the fighters, but also the fighters themselves. I think, you know, um, there's some really good coaches out there, and you know what it is, the, the, the Irish fighting spirit is second to none in the world, it really yeah, is. Sure. You know, Ireland's always produced gutsy, tough, real man's fighters, you know, guys that will go out and put it on the line. And at the bottom line is that's what fans want to see. Yeah, you know, slick, absolutely. Slick BJJ, submissions, it's great. And the more you know about the sport, the more you enjoy that. But even yeah. after all these years, you still, you see two guys fighting their heart out, trading shots. Yeah. You know, everyone loves that. Everyone yeah. wants to You're see right. the knockout. You're right. And I think that's what Irish MMA delivers. It really does. Yeah. Well, speaking of coaches that, that, are, that are off the charts and... and um, Irish MMA scene. We've got on our on our digital wall Barry Oglesby. Barry, one of the lead commentators at, at Cage Contender. How are you doing, Barry? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, really, really good. I, I'm so looking forward to kicking off the season on Saturday at, at the next Cage Contender show. Yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I, I, I tell you, it seems like a months, years actually since we did a show together. Yeah. It seems that long. I don't know. It's just that uh, this one hasn't really flown in for me. I've just been looking forward to watching the night now for quite a while. Yeah, well, I think the last time, and I should have said in your introduction, you were also the uh, the Cage Contender Irish Personality of the Year this year at the Cage Contender Awards. Yeah, it's, it's a little <laughs> been like voted the Blackboard Monitor or something like that. We <laughs> 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 get Coach of the Year or something like that. But uh, no, it was uh, it was nice. It was nice, and uh, it was nice to talk to you there too. So it was, yeah, uh, it was a good night out, wasn't it? So was, so anything that you're looking forward to, particularly? I know we, we've got. I mean the the top of the bill at Cage Contender, Gunnar Nelson, always a crowd pleaser. Um, I know we've got Arnie Isaacson as well, another crowd pleaser. Um, I mean, the, the card at Cage Contender looks to be really, really good this time. And uh, once again, you know, John's delivering a fantastic show. Um, anything you're looking forward to particularly? Looking down the card, actually, I think uh, there's a couple more that I'm, I'm a bit more excited about than even the headliner. Um, I think the Nelson fight's going to be really, really good. He's fighting a guy called uh, Potenko from from uh, from uh, the Ukraine. I almost said Russia. I know Ukrainians wouldn't be happy with that. But uh, looking up and down the card, I think there's a there's a couple more, maybe a, a couple of underdog fights in there that you might uh, you might be interested in seeing. There's uh, Brian Moore against Connor Dillon, and um, Dillon's around a while over here. Really, really tough guy. He's uh, 22, so only a young guy. And Brian Moore is only 24. Brian Moore, someone I, I kind of have an eye on, and um, in the featherweight division. 
for me, he looks like he's got all the tools to kind of go all the way. Um, kind of a, a, a relatively inexperienced. I think he's only got about five fights. Four, I think he's four and one. But uh, he's someone I've been kind of keeping an eye on. He's got tasty boxing, really, really improving ground skills as well. And Dylan, the guy he's fighting, just doesn't seem to go away. I don't want to uh, offend the guy in any way by saying that I don't think he's the best fighter in the world. But for me, he just he's, he's really, really tough. You, I, I heard you guys talking about how tough Irish fighters can be. This is a guy you just can't finish. Um, even if his skills aren't the best in the world, I don't think he's ever going to be finished in this fight. And, and I think this is going to be a real barn burner. I think we can expect something from that. Um, also, a real British favourite is Ross Point and is on the card too against John Michael Shield. I know you're a fan of John Michael Shield, Brett. I've yeah. known, seen him a few times before. It, it, that, that to me is a, as all the marks of a, a, a real scrap. So I'm looking forward to that one too. Yeah, I think that is going to be a fantastic. You know, again, both of those guys, you know, have have more heart than than anything. So I think that that fight. Um, the last time I saw John Michael Shield fight um, was was one of those fights that that just always sticks out in my head because he was you know sort of going into the last round. Um, it was a hard fight for him. It was a long night. And, and he just looked beat. And all of a sudden, the crowd started to, to chant. The crowd started to get behind him. And he just came to life, finished the fight. It was it was brilliant. So, yeah, yeah. The big fight in Jordan, was it? Yeah, that's it, the one in Jordan. Oh, yeah, that was unbelievable. That was a rocky moment. Yeah. Because he, he was getting destroyed. That was two rounds, uh, almost 10, eight rounds to Cheng. And then suddenly in the last round, he just came out and it just... Listen, I, I know John Michael here quite a while. I remember about uh, six or seven years ago, fighting at like the, the Irish amateur MMA league and just seeing this guy kick his gum shield. This is this is a, a, a competition that's on a mat. It's like in a sports hall. Yeah. You're not talking about UFC or you're not talking about any crowds watching. And this guy was so pumped to be fighting. It was like it was like watching the guy who like literally like he was fighting in pride that day. And here he was with like 50 people watching him. And he was really, really excited to be fighting. And I just thought, who is this guy? The first act, I'd say, a, a, a few choice words kind of came to my mind about him. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Watching him, he, he, he kind of has that same enthusiasm. I think he'd, he'd fight whether he was fighting in front of like that, if he was fighting in front of five guys or 5,000. I don't think he cares. I think it's, it's great to watch. Yeah, no, I think, I think you're absolutely right. And, and yeah, you know, going back to the Irish crowds, I mean, the, the Irish fans are, are unlike any other. And, and, um, I think the the last event we did last year, um, you know, I just remember standing in the middle of the cage, getting ready to announce as as the card builds and we get nearer to the top of the card, and and I'm, I'm I have quite a loud voice anyway, and I, I'm pretty vocal into the microphone, and I couldn't hear myself, and and to be standing in center cage, screaming at the top of my lungs into a mic that's going into a PA and not being able to hear the feedback, I mean, that gives you an idea of of you know just what the Irish yeah. crowds are like. Yeah. That was that was an unbelievable night because you know I sat down with my wife to watch that on TV. And I've actually, believe it or not, that was the first show I've ever watched where I've commentated on. For some reason, right, I always end up missing them. But that was the first time I'd, I'd watched it, and I I actually said to her, like, look, Robinson and Wayne coming up, you know, wait, you see this fight? It's amazing. And when we watched it, 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 I was like, you know what? If you turn the sound off, this is quite a like no offense to either fighter, but it's quite a poor fight technically. But it was like watching Rocky on the night. It was it yeah. was unbelievable. It was uh, that's the second time I've used the Rocky reference today. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like uh, it was the, the atmosphere was unbelievable. There was three thousand people there. Every single one of them behind Robinson. Neil Wayne played his part. Of course, he won like that. He won the first two rounds really clearly. And at the end, it was like oh, we were just we were just wondering is is he going to fall? Robinson was doing such great damage on the inside. Now that was an amazing fight. A really amazing night. I think you really had to be there that night to to, yeah. to appreciate. Yeah, I agree. Really, really good. You know, like I said, I, I, I can't wait. We're, we're going to let you go, but I'm, I'm so glad that, uh, that, that we're getting ready to kick off this weekend. I'll, I'll look forward to, to seeing you and the rest of the Cage Contender crew uh, in Ireland this weekend. Um, really, really, really looking forward to it. Thanks so much for your time today. Um, thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. And uh, perhaps next time you're over in England, we'll get you in the studio proper. That'd be great. Thanks a lot, Brett. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. See you soon. Yeah, Barry's a great guy. He's, he's a fantastic commentator. Yeah. Um, you know, coming over to Ireland from, from well, American via England via Ireland um, was one of the guys that made me really, really feel at home at that show and, you know, just kind of embraced me from the beginning. And yeah. Really good. I guess it's just all the Irish hospitality as well. I was going to say, that, that's every time I go over to Ireland, and I've done it a few times now, the hospitality is there and, you know, they generally look after you. And, again, Cage Contender is a perfect example of that. They really do look after you and they know how to look after their fighters. Yeah. coaches, all the other people. But, I mean, people forget that UK MMA as a whole 
has yeah. a lot of roots in Ireland. Yeah, you know? of and, course. And John Cavana, who, who's obviously from Southern Ireland, was yeah. one of the original coaches and fighters in the UK. Yeah. So yeah. it's right. Well, it let's is, talk uh, about that when we come back. Uh, join us after the break. We're going to talk a bit more about Irish MMA. We're going to look at the UFC's return to Japan and some of the things that are coming up there. So stay tuned. We'll be right back on Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. Welcome back to Sports Tonight Live presents The Cage. Uh, just before the break, we were talking to Barry Oglesby. We were talking a bit about Irish MMA. Um, Aaron, just to, to sort of put a stamp on that, um, you know, we were talking about the excitement of, of Irish crowds, and, and you mentioned just before the break that um, you know, UK MMA as a whole, I mean, it encompasses Ireland and Scotland. We tend to forget that because we, we're you know, within the UK, in England, we're, we're you know, a bit tight-knit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there, there's a whole world out there in, in MMA on, on the smaller islands, I guess I'll say. Yeah, there definitely is. I mean, there, there is a history in Scotland, a history in, in Ireland as well. I mentioned John Cavanna earlier on. Yeah. I remember yeah. him seeing him fight on the early shows. He had a great battle against Lee Remedios. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that would be that would have been really good. It was yeah. a great. It was I'll a great fight. Find really that was. fight. Yeah. Really yeah. good. Um, so this week I'm doing a contest actually because I'm going to Cage Contender in Dublin. Um, I have asked the question via Twitter. Um, send me all of the initials of all of the current cage contender champions and I've actually emailed that to the cage at brettfreeman.com also follow us at the cage STL on Twitter uh, and if you follow us send me an email with with those particular uh, initials of all the champions and then you'll be in with a shout to win and what I'm giving away this week is I'm giving away what I'm calling the Hollywood experience so I will meet you in Dublin uh, you'll come into the event with me you'll sit cage side with me uh, we'll spend the evening together We'll go to the after party together, and it should be a really, really good time. So I've had lots and lots of response. Anybody else that wants to get on, uh, I'm going to close the contest tomorrow evening, and I'll announce the winner via Twitter and obviously send the, the uh, winning entry and email on Friday morning. So on to the rest of, of MMA and, and some other things that we want to talk about. Um, you've been coaching for, for quite a while. Tell us a bit about Team Coliseum and, and the things that you're doing there particularly. Um, okay, so I mean, I, w I used to be an instructor for Thai boxing, and then when I switched over, the first two or three years in MMA was was just me training and, and, and training to be a fighter. But I just have this natural attraction to being being a coach. Uh, I think it's that uh, old cliche: those who can't teach. <laughs> I, think, I think that <laughs> applies to me uh, as particularly in this instance. But uh, we've got a um, we've got a team uh, mostly s uh, sort of amateur level. And we've got one sort of uh, professional who's sort of uh, making a streak ahead of the pack, Saul Rogers, yeah. who's 3-0 uh, and undefeated in professional. He's got an amateur record of 9-0-1. Um, in fact, he was supposed to be fighting this weekend, but unfortunately his opponent, Pete McGurk, um, has been injured, so that's left him without a bout. Um, but we, we focus on um, being a fighter's gym. We always have. You know, the guys that come and train with us, they see that, you know, there's a lot of guys fighting, and we focus on... Um, uh, sort of giving them a, a, a long amateur career. Yeah. So I don't want fighters to suddenly jump into professional fights. You know, I think that's important. I, th I think that a, a lot of gyms um, will, will sort of rush their fighters. And, and, you know, I mean, the guys that are just starting out, they get in and they get, you know, their, their first taste of, of um, a full MMA spar and they think, oh, yeah, this is, this is really what I want to yeah. do. And, and boy, you, you, they get in the cage even at the amateur level, and I think it's a quick wake-up call. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, and yeah. Indeed, you know, I, I even tell some of our guys that uh, go and have a fight, even if you only have one, because it will change the perspective of how you train. Yeah, You will get a different perspective on what's happening. But, you know, we look at having 10 or so amateur fights so that they can experience wins, losses, submissions, knockouts, all of those things. When they turn professional, they know their game. They've learned their sport. Yeah, You know, and Saul's a perfect example. He's undefeated. He's, you know, he's had a really great professional start and hopefully you know one day we'll be looking at him on the UFC so. yeah yeah well you've you've also I think you've you've cornered quite a few um, big names in in today's MMA because I think you you were saying that you um, well I'll let you tell us tell us some of the, the guys that you've cornered uh, I've had some interesting call I have experiences cornering I remember cornering Paul Daly yeah. a long long time ago at a small show in Aston Villa I think it was his first fight or at least uh, <laughs> one of his good. early fights. Yeah. Uh, he fought as a middleweight, and he had a uh, Kevin Randall and blonde hair. Yeah. yeah he, uh, and uh, that was a great experience. And uh, you know, um, I, 
I remember Dan Hardy early on. I remember uh, you know a lot of the fighters that people now see in the UFC. I've known for a while, and indeed, 2009, I looked after uh, I joint coached the M1 England team with Dave Butlin. Yeah. And we had a few guys on there, but one of those, a couple of those guys, Rob Broughton was our heavyweight. Um, Tom Blackledge was our light heavyweight. Matt Thorpe, who was our middleweight. Yeah. Um, Simon Phillips and Ian Butlin himself was our was our complete lineup. So that's a big. So so for M1, I mean, some of our viewers may not be familiar with M1. I think M1's a, a fantastic organization. I think the things that they're doing is, you know, it's it's really an interesting spin on MMA. Um, sometimes you know you catch it late at night on on Sky Sports or whatever, but. Um, tell me a bit about how did you get involved in M1 and, and just sort of the whole M1 experience. So I've got, the person I need to thank for that is, is Ian Dean, actually, at Cage Wars. Yeah. Um, certainly, um, he uh, instigated putting a team together. Um, Dave Butlin was one of the coaches. Dave wanted me on board as well. Um, so we put the team together. And at the time, M1 was using this principle of how it, uh, various countries having teams and you would fight against four other teams in your group yeah. The winner of the group would then go through to semi-finals and through through finals, um, which we did well because we went through to the semi-finals. We ended up fighting one of the Russian teams in Russia. Um, and to be honest, they were incredible. Their, their grappling skills were superb and they really took us apart on that show. But we had some really good experiences. Our first, our first bout was in Japan uh, and we fought um, Team Japan in Japan, which was an incredible experience. Wow. Yeah. And we went 4-1, you know, our first season in the, uh, in the M1 arrived with a, a real sort of bang and in fact one of one of the things I remember about that is uh, um, Tom Blackledge's team mate Rampage Jackson uh, joined us so I cornered uh, Rob Broughton and Tom Blackledge with Rampage ba Jackson to my left which is a great experience yeah you yeah so, and you've had some great experiences in, in MMA haven't you I've, I've been really lucky yeah. because you know at, at the end of the day I'm, I'm not I'm not anything special I you know I promoted King of the Cage I'm not anything special I've just constantly put myself out there and you know yeah. wanted to get involved and I think that's what you've got to do you've got to yeah, agree. kind of say Look, yeah. I want to do that yeah you know and go and do it and find somebody to give you the break so I've been lucky and yeah. I've just I've worked hard I've got to be honest so yeah, yeah. but some great memories to look back on yeah fantastic yeah. really really good well so M1 Japan that that's kind of a good lead into our, our next segment so the UFC makes its return to Japan um, this weekend they've, they've got an interesting card um, Edgar Henderson at the top of the bill yeah um, what do you think about the UFC coming? I mean, there's there's a lot of of, uh, of history, pride, um, the, the whole thing around Japanese fight shows, and and now the UFC is coming in, you know, with with another big show and trying to do it. So, you know, what are your thoughts on the UFC returning to Japan? So, I, I think you know most people involved in martial arts will look at Japan as as the the homeland as such. That's where yeah. martial arts comes from. I know, you know, there's lots of global martial arts, but everybody has that affinity with Japan. Um, and they do it like nobody else does it. They really make a spectacle. Yeah. When you look at the, uh, the early prides, when they were selling out 50, 60, 70, 80,000 seat arenas, when other promotions were lucky to do 10,000. Yeah. You know, um, what was really interesting there was, was how <coughs> knowledgeable and respectful the crowd is. Hmm. So you watch some of the prides, and indeed when we were on M1, it's really quiet. But then yeah. they applaud when there's something interesting happens. It's really, really is an interesting experience. I think UFC going back there will probably put Japan back on the map because it's been a little quiet. Yeah, 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 that's, that's a good point. Yeah, so, so what about the card? I mean, there's, there's some interesting fights coming up. You mentioned Rampage earlier. He's got a, a pretty tough one against a Ryan Bader. Um, what are your thoughts on that fight? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I may be on my own here, but I kind of think it's almost uh, uh, Rampage's last Hurrah, I mean, he's really got to go out there and beat Vader. Yeah. Um, you know, um, I think his stock isn't at the same value it was a few years ago in the UFC, and, and indeed it's certainly nowhere near the level it was when it was, uh, when it was Pride, when he was one of the, the faces of Pride. So, um, but you look at an opponent like Vader, Vader's got two losses. The Tito Ortiz loss, which was really a shock loss. Yeah. You know, I'm a big Tito fan, but even I didn't really think Tito was going to come back and beat Bader. And the other one is, is John Jones as well. So Bader's a real story. You yeah, know? Yeah. That guy's a real fighter. So I think um, Jackson's got his work cut out there. If I was, you know, if I was to go with somebody, I'd probably say I think, I think Bader's probably going to have to come back here and, and, and put a statement on there to get yeah. himself back in the mix. Yeah. I do think um, you're right, yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know, quickly your prediction for Edgar Henderson. Um, 
I come from a stand-up background. I'd really like to see Edgar win. You yeah. know, I do think the secret is uh, if he can keep it standing, uh, if he can throw some leather, um, I think he's got a good chance. But uh, if Henderson gets it to the ground, you I'm know, with you, I could see it going our way. You know, but right. uh, as I mentioned, hey, you know, I'm, I come from a striking background. I still like to see people throwing punches, and I still yeah. like to people see people falling over unconscious. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, that's about all we have time. I, I could talk to you all day, Aaron. It's, it's really, we'll really good. We'll stay afterwards. Yeah, yeah, we okay. will do. We will do. So, as always, I'd like to give you a gift for coming on the show. Wonderful. Welcome to the Hollywood Army. Excellent stuff. Thank you so much. I'm going to return the favor because nobody ever does this for you. But uh, Oh, outstanding. I've brought you a, a, one of the Team Coliseum shirts. Fantastic. So, I'll wear that with pride. Have that. And uh, Very next, good. Time you, next time you see our fighters, wear it. And Thank join you so much. Arm. Fantastic. That's about all we have time for today on Sports Night Live Presents the Cage. Uh, join us next week when my co-host Brad Wharton will be back. Brad, hope you're feeling better. Hope to see you back again uh, next week. Also remember to follow us on Twitter, at the Cage STL. So for Aaron Chatfield, for myself, Brett Hollywood Freeman, it's not go time, but it's time to go. Join us next week on Sports Night Live Presents the Cage. Stay ahead of the game with Sports Tonight Live. Don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Search for Sports Tonight Live on Facebook and like our fan page. Follow Sports Tonight TV on Twitter and tweet us your thoughts and opinions. Sports Tonight Live, it's the platform for the fans.